Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, really glad to be here in uh, South Korea. Um, so let's get started. So my name is Travis Moore. I'm the uh, CTO of Everpedia, which is the uh, world's first blockchain encyclopedia on uh, EOS. So what are we? So our original goal was to basically be kind of like a Wikipedia 2.0. Um, so we started by importing five and a half million uh, English Wikipedia pages to serve as kind of like a, a baseline um, for our articles. Another big issue that was we had with Wikipedia is that they have a bad tendency to reject articles that people make if they're not quote unquote famous enough, which is their notability requirement. And we thought that was kind of dumb, so we, as long as someone makes an article that's properly cited and uh, isn't like promotional or anything, um, we don't really mind it being on the site. Um, the other thing we have is, so with Wikipedia, their um, articles are basically just blobs of uh, HTML, plus they have something called wiki markup. So what we wanted to do is actually put uh, metadata tags, and I'll show you later, um, in the articles, so it's more uh, easily readable by machines. Uh, it's Google structured data, if you guys know what that is. Uh, let's see. We also did a lot of uh, CSS improvements, a WYSIWYG, which is what you see is what you get editor, um, and then other UI UX improvements. Also, our mobile pages are uh, Google AMP, which is um, both better for SEO and there's uh, decreased load times. Uh, and then you don't need to actually learn the Wikipedia markup language to make edits to the site. So from a technical standpoint, it's uh, Django, Python, uh, MySQL. So we have two sites on right now. We have the traditional centralized site and then we have a blockchain site. Both of them work, but eventually we'll be retiring the uh, centralized one in favor of the blockchain one. So like MySQL. Um, we also are using uh, Amazon AWS and Azure for our hosting. And so what we're doing on the blockchain one is uh, the token is used for uh, edit rewards, voting and staking and other things. So history and traction. So we started in 2015 as a traditional website um, with just the goals that I mentioned before, just generally improving on Wikipedia. And we're up to around 6 million articles right now, which is pretty good. Um, we actually have a decent amount of traffic for what will soon be a full DAP. So we have around 1.3 million uh, uh, monthly uh, users, users being people that come to the site and just read pages, uh, and about 60,000 of those are returning. So, what we're so this is just a screenshot I took earlier today of how many people are just browsing the site. So, I'm really excited about this because there's one thing I've noticed is sometimes the blockchain sphere tends to be very it tends to be closed, not by design, but just by th the way things are. So most people reaching our site come in through like a Google search or through like Facebook or something. So people who don't have any experience with blockchain, when we fully migrate over, they'll suddenly start seeing all this blockchain stuff and they'll say like, what's this? And hopefully they'll be more curious to uh, like explore it further. So we'll, we wanna try to serve as like a bridge between the uh, the norm I guess normal people and the uh, crypto people. <laughs> um, so this is um, a recent activity from our uh, uh, recent activity from our blockchain site. We actually have a lot of uh, Korean editors on the site. So I'd say about half English, half Korean right now. So um, we're looking. We're actually going to be adding a community manager uh, pretty soon to kind of help us expand in Korea. So this is um, this is an interesting graphic. It's basically comparing Wikipedia with like a newer like slim MacBook with, uh, I mean, uh, Everpedia with like a, a newer fancy MacBook with a, like an old CRT monitor from Wikipedia. So our goal is, like I said, to kind of be like more modernized. 
Uh, let's see. So key events. So um, we were founded in June of 2015 by me, Sam Kazmian, uh, Theodore Forcelius, and Mockwood Mogadom. Mockwood, if, if any of you guys know about uh, Genius.com, uh, our rap genius, the lyrics website, uh, he started that too. Um, so in last year, the founder of Wikipedia actually joined us. So Wikipedia was started by Jimmy Wales and Larry Singer and um, Larry uh, joined us last year. So you might see him around at some of our more uh, conferences. This year in February, um, we received a $30 million investment by Galaxy Digital, um, uh, Digital's EOS uh, IO ecosystem fund. And um, so because of that, we uh, in July, we did a five to one uh, ratio IQ token airdrop to any people who held EOS on the, um, the Genesis date, which I believe was June 2nd. Um, and then just recently we disabled editing on the centralized uh, Everpedia site to prep it to move over fully to the uh, blockchain. Okay, so now I'll go into that a little bit further. So what is the problem with centralized apps? So centralized applications have many users, but only one person is really profiting from that, which is the company that's providing the app. So um, they're also really easy to censor, either through governments or corporations. So Wikipedia, Facebook, um, all these people are creating value on Wikipedia, but they're not getting any value. I mean, they, unless, you know, they, they're not really getting any like tangible value from making the edits. Same with like Reddit and YouTube. Everyone who uploads content, I mean, some of them get money from like advertising, but it's not necessarily the same thing. So how do dApps solve the problem? So dApps allow the users and value creators to become the value extractors as well. So, and it's a lot harder to censor things if they're decentralized uh, and peer-to-peer. -peer. So we're using IPFS. So examples are Steemit, which is pretty successful, and then D2, which I think is also based off of Steam. Okay, so with Everpedia, um, you're rewarded IQ tokens for curating articles. So curating, in addition to actually editing articles, it's making sure that spam or bad edits get voted down and good ones get voted up. And um, when we do the governance contract, um, then we, we, like me personally and our team, will relinquish control over the future of Everpedia to the government's, uh, governance contract, and those tokens will allow you to have uh, voting power on that governance contract. Um, right now, we, the team, still has control over it, but we're eventually will release it. And um, so, also, the more tokens that you have, the more incentive. So, if you're a whale, you have an incentive to kind of keep everything quality, because otherwise, the platform will get a bad reputation, and your investment will probably go down. So, this is what I was talking about before. We have a three smart contract. Um, uh, schema. So basically, we have the governance module, which we haven't started yet. Uh, we have the token module, which handles most of the day to day token operations like burning, uh, transferring, issuing, things like that. And then we have the article module, which has all of the uh, interesting features like voting, staking, claiming, rewards, that sort of thing. So, how are we actually storing the articles? So, um, we're using IPFS which is kind of like BitTorrent, um, is probably the best way to explain it. So by doing this, it's a lot harder to censor by various foreign regimes. So, and then why are we using EOS? So there's a couple reasons. One of the main reasons is everything's written in C++. So it's a lot easier, there's a lot larger talent pool um, that can just come in like almost immediately and start writing code because you don't have to learn other uh, languages like Solidity, which is less used um, by like the programming community. It's also more documented, so we found that really helpful, at least for me. 
when I was learning C++, um, it was very helpful. It's also very fast. So the main, the EOS main net, I think the recent record was 3,500 transactions a second. And the block times are every half a second. So compared to like Bitcoin, Ethereum, and NEO, um, it's a lot faster. So also the lead developer of EOS uh, created Steam and BitShares. So we chose them because um, there was a lot of experience in designing those products, which are fairly successful. And then what else? Proof of stake. So um, it allows for greater community governance actions as well as it's better for the environment so you don't have to waste money with mining. So, and it's also mostly free transactions. I say mostly because um, if any of you guys know about EOS, about the RAM uh, politics going on. So <laughs> EOS has like uh, three main uh, quotas that each person gets depending on how much EOS they stake. So CPU and bandwidth reset every 24 hours and most people are probably just gonna be using those two but if you have to make like any entries to like a table or anything, uh, you have to pay RAM to store it. So right in the beginning RAM was kind of expensive and it, there was a lot of backlash so I'm pretty sure now it's gonna eventually be fixed so it's a lot cheaper so, uh, down to what it should actually be. So, but to help that, we, uh, Everpedia is paying the RAM for its users so they don't have to do it. And uh, finally, EOS has a lot of developer support. They raised, their ICO raised over four billion US dollars. So block one is uh, helping a lot with the community. So if any of you guys are interested in uh, an EOS project, you guys should hit them up, um, the link down there. So why are we using IPFS or how does it work on Everpedia? So what we're doing is we're converting our articles. We had to, we started from MySQL. So basically we, we had to pull from multiple MySQL tables and put them all into one easily parsable HTML. We might switch to JSON later on. Uh, we're still kind of debating that internally. But um, either way, it gets cached locally on our servers. So when um, someone, so the source of truth always will be the chain, the EOS chain. Um, there's a table that um, holds all the IPFS hashes for each article. Um, but in order to provide a fast user experience, we have to cache things. Um, so, and then we sync it periodically with API calls and cron jobs. So, for example, when someone requests a page on Everpedia, it takes the, uh, it parses the locally stored HTML and it puts in more CSS and other stuff on there. So, um, and that page is also gzip cache. So when another person visits the site, it'll be faster as well. And of course, if anyone makes an edit, that whole cache gets invalidated and has to get regenerated. So, it's, so this is just an example of uh, some of the articles. If you guys, I guess the cache, they're truncated, but like QM, XO, YP, like those are just the uh, IPFS hashes for the articles. And this is just some HTML, a uh, small little sample on the page. Okay, so one of the more interesting things, at least for me, is, I don't know if you guys can see that, but um, we put, we, what I was saying before about having a blob of HTML, we, at least for some parts of the pages, we put something called schema.org, which is like a, a tagging system, so it's more smart. So a robot will come in here and it'll say, this page is about a person. That person's name is Travis Moore. He's a male, he was born in 1989. So all those key value pairs are standardized. So if a bot comes in, it's more easily uh, understandable. And um, that could be used. We can also possibly in the future, um, one of the things I'm excited about is, say someone wanted to know everyone whose first name is Travis, who was born in 1989, who has a, a, in Los Angeles. So if you wanted to get those three things, with MySQL it would be a where, state, a where clause, 
with ANS. So we were hoping that um, we can kind of integrate that into a search. It's a future project. So it'll help um, be like an extremely powerful search feature in the future. Uh, let's see. Okay, so this is our token. So starting supply was uh, 10, uh, 10 billion. Uh, mint, so every 30 minutes, um, we give out the rewards. So there's a fixed amount uh, every day and they, uh, the rewards are based on votes of token holders. So after every 30 minute period, editors will receive a certain portion of that period's uh, IQ tokens, depending on um, what they did. And I'll get into that in the later. So for the first year, um, we we're trying to target between one and 5% inflation. Um, so the formula for that it's basically just an annualized inflation formula. It's not, um, so for right now, we're just using 10 IQ every 30 minutes just for testing. But uh, in the future, that'll be raised up more. And also, um, as about going back to governance, once we relinquish control, the community can determine what the uh, proper balance between inflation and, because uh, if you have too many rewards, the price is just gonna drop because everyone is taking the rewards and just selling it, so there has to be a balance. Self-sustainability, so we got some criticism for this, um, but so far we're staying with it. So there's a transfer fee of 0.1%. This is only if you're making transfers not on the, um, between the article contract. So if you're making edits to pages or if you're claiming rewards or getting stuff, you don't have to pay the fee. This is merely a way to kind of counteract some of the inflation from the token uh, rewards and also to help pay for some of the RAM. So one thing we were thinking of doing is creating a, a, a DEX out of the token fees and, and all the accumulated token fees, there would be a smart contract so um, people can buy IQ from the DEX and then all the proceeds from that will you be used immediately to pay for RAM, CPU, or bandwidth um, on EOS. So that's like a, like a trustless way of kind of like ensuring that the, uh, the network has enough resources and RAM to pay for everything. Let's see. And then also we could, you could burn the transfer fee away to help introduce deflation to counteract some of the rewards. All this eventually will be determined by the community. So right now we're kind of just playing with it uh, to see what the, um, the feedback is on it. I mean, EOS itself has a 1% trading fee on RAM to kind of discourage speculation. So, um, I mean, we need, someone needs to pay for the RAM. Um, so we, that's one of the reasons we did the fee. So this is our flow chart. It might be a little bit hard to see, but, um, and I'll go through this in the next couple of slides. So basically someone wants to uh, create an article. So they click, the, <laughs> they create the page button and then they go to edit the page. They propose the edit and then the server validates that um, we use scatter to do of our uh, key signing. So the server validates that the proposal actually got sent to the blockchain. It does it an API call. Um, so if that happens, it goes to the vote. So the vote lasts six hours and I'll show you guys pictures later. Um, so there's two results for a vote. Either the article gets approved or it gets rejected. If it gets approved, all the people that voted for an approval get rewarded and the people who, get, who voted for a rejection get slashed and I'll explain that later. Um, and it's the reverse is true. If the page got rejected, everyone who voted for a rejection gets rewarded. It'll become more apparent later. So what is scatter? Basically it's MetaMask for EOS. Um, if you guys know what MetaMask is, it's um, where right now it's on desktop too. It's a Chrome extension, but also a standalone program that uh, lets you more easily interact with the EOS blockchain and dApps. So like MetaMask, you put in your private key and uh, Scatter stores it, and it's only used when the transaction signature is required. 
And um, it's useful because it's injected into the browser and um, a bunch of dApps that like CryptoKitties uses MetaMask. So if your dApp is set up for it, um, you can use it to handle your EOS transactions. Staking tokens. So to actually do voting and edits, you don't use the IQ token itself. We borrowed some ideas from Steam. So what you have to actually do is you have to take your tokens and you have to lock them up for 21 days and it generates something called brain power and you actually use that brain power to do voting and the brain power is not fungible or transferable. So after the 21 days are up, you can get your IQ back, um, but until then they have to say stake. And the interesting part about this is when I talked about slashing earlier, if you, do a lot of bad edits and your edits keep on getting rejected, this stake gets lengthened. Sort of like a punishment to try to encourage people to do uh, quality edits. So this is just a quick uh, screenshot of some of the uh, stakes. So like if you do a stake, what'll happen is if you put in the integer amount there and you click new state, you'll get a scatter pop up confirming that you want to send uh, your IQ to the uh, contract to sit there while it stakes. And then uh, when you're done uh, under the claim uh, column, you can uh, claim back your IQ. What'll happen is once you actually stake it, you will immediately get the brain power. You don't have to wait 21 days to get the brain power to edit. And this is just an example. So this, in the background, it's our edit page. So when someone wants to place an edit and they're done doing their edit, they'll click save and then they'll get this pop-up from Scatter, and Scatter sends the, uh, basically, e-particle CTRs is the smart contract for the article, and the proposed method is called with things on the right as the parameters. The, all those are IPFS hashes. So if someone clicks accept, that'll get sent to the smart contract. Let's see, and then, then and I apologize, we're working actually on getting a front-end uh, person to kind of uh, clean up some of this, but this is essentially a diff page. So once someone proposes an edit, they'll get, uh, they'll go to a voting page where they can either vote for or against the proposal and they can see the changes made. And we wanna make this look cleaner in the future. It's one of our uh, to-do items. But for right now, um, it serves its purpose. So editing and curation. So this is just, um, this is just a, deeper dive into how the algorithm actually works. Um, if you want to see it on the white paper, you can. It's basically um, editors get, um, so out of the total token rewards in a given period, editors are allotted 80% and voters are allotted 20%. So if you have multiple editors in the same period, they split off of that 80%. And if you have multiple voters in that period, they split off of that 20%. So we're doing this to try to encourage people to make edits and not just vote and just farm the votes for extra uh, IQ. So when you're done, you can go here and you can claim your rewards. It's, um, they'll show up on here. We have, because of the way EOS works, um, EOS has transaction time limits. So we have to split up the, um, the rewards processing and the multi we, we split them up and then we do cron jobs to uh, call them automatically. They can, their functions can be called by anyone um, to process the rewards, but we do it for them. Uh, let's see. Slashing, so I was alluding to this earlier. Um, basically what it's saying is that if you vote against what everyone else is doing, the length of your staking will be increased. So you can still get your IQ back. This is back to the 21 days. So if the vote is close, you won't, your, your stake won't be increased that much. But if the vote is very much in favor of one or the other and you're voting on the wrong side, your, your, your IQ is gonna essentially be trapped long, for a longer period of time. So it's trying to encourage people to make uh, quality edits and this is just 
again, this is on our white paper. It's just more um, explanations on, uh, it's just more what I explained. So common criticisms. So we get a lot of uh, criticisms about whale voting. Basically, uh, what is preventing a big person coming in and just obliterating a vote with their own agenda? Well, one reason is one reason we did the staking is so that we lock up the IQ. Um, so if they want to do something like that, they have to commit to waiting 21 days. So if they do something bad and the token price crashes, their IQ is gonna be stuck for 21 days and they can't do anything. So that's one reason we do it. We also, um, the whales have an interest in making sure the, um, the network is quality because their investment is literally on the line. Another um, criticism we get is false info. And I mean, Wikipedia has the same concerns. The only real way uh, to police that is just to have a quality ed uh, editor community. And as far as inflation, so another thing is people are saying um, they'll just, everyone will just come in, get their rewards, and this, you know, go to the exchanges and then dump their rewards. So that is a potential issue. So what we're doing is um, we could either adjust or the community can adjust the transfer fee or the uh, reward amount. Or we can also, and or we can also add more features in. One idea that I might, I was kind of thinking of is uh, article staking, where people can kind of like claim articles as their own uh, by staking IQ on it. But we haven't done that uh, yet. And then what else? Vision and roadmap. So uh, June of uh, this year, we did our airdrop to EOS holders. I'm sorry if the font is thin. Um, and then we deployed our article contract to the, actually the airdrop was in July, not June, sorry. We, <laughs> we uh, deployed our article contract in July as well. And then the governance contract we're planning on releasing probably in a month or two. And then uh, eventually we're gonna relinquish uh, control to the uh, community. And so this is just a quote from our uh, chief information officer. Uh, thanks to new technology, it is now possible to move beyond Wikipedia, just as we moved beyond Britannica almost two decades ago. So, Britan so Wikipedia actually started off themselves by, uh, I think it was the 1914 version of Britannica. So they, they started with that, and we started with Wikipedia. So this is just our team. Um, there's Larry Sanger, me, Theodore is our uh, CEO, Sam, uh, Kadar, Suchet, and Mockwood. And uh, so this is, um, if you guys want to join our Telegram or learn more about how to make edits, uh, you can go on these links. I'll leave this up a little bit. And then um, we're also on Upbit if you guys wanted to uh, trade the token. And then that's just a moon graphic. Um, and then let's see, so if you wanna connect with me, um, we have our main Telegram chat as well, and um, Twitter, and then you can, you can also hit me up directly if you want. I think that's it. Um, I did reserve time, does anyone have questions? <laughs> <laughs> 네, 무어 대표님 수고해 주셔서 감사합니다. 그럼 몇 가지 질문을 함께 살펴보도록 하겠습니다. 우선 첫 번째 질문인데요. 인터넷 모바일 이용자들이 플랫폼에 참여하는 주요 동기는 금전적인 것 이외에도 재미라고 봅니다. 에브리피디아는 딱딱한 백과서전을 넘어서 지식의 플랫폼이 되어야 된다고 보는데 에브리피디아는 이용자들에게 어떤 재미를 줄수 있나요? So I think the main motivation for internet and mobile users to participate in the platform is not just money, but fun as well. So um, Everypedia, in my opinion, should be a platform of knowledge beyond just rigid encyclopedia. So what kind of uh, fun can you provide to the users? Do you have any specific plan at the moment? We don't have a specific plan uh, at the moment for that. Right now, we literally just want to move our media plans or to move the centralized uh, traffic over fully to the blockchain side. Both of them do work right now. Once that is done and everything is squared away and the domains are merged again, 
Um, we'll probably, we definitely have a lot of plans uh, for adding uh, different things. But as far as like fun or gamification of the system, uh, we haven't particularly thought of uh, that yet. 네, 답변 감사합니다. So um, anyone, no, so right now we're the one that are sending calls to the contract, but anyone can call it. So if you look at the article contract, um, anybody can call the rewards uh, distribution function. It's not just callable by our team. And it's only callable once every, uh, so no, there's no double spend or whatever, or double rewards. Uh, reward process. Yeah, so that's me. 네, 제가 질문을 읽기도 전에 먼저 두 번째 질문까지 답변을 해주셨습니다. 다음 질문으로 넘어가도록 하겠습니다. 문서 수정에 대한 찬반 투표 시 패배한 유저들이 페널티를 받는다면 그 페널티가 두려워서라도 조직력을 동원하여 승인받지 못할 문서를 승인시키거나 하는 상황이 일어나지 않을까요? 혹은 찬반 논란이 심각한 문서의 경우에는 한쪽의 의견이 압도하지 않을 수 있습니다. 이런 경우에 대한 대안이 있나요? Um, if there was a voting about a modification of document, if the users who failed, I mean, I, I think, uh, yes, if the users who failed to win the voting got penalty, then those users who got penalty may have um, force to approve the document. They may have what? To force, approve? force, force. I mean, try to make it approved. I mean, right now it just goes by how the, the voting is. Um, eventually we want to add like uh, a system as to, you know, everyone who votes placing a reason for their vote. There's definitely improvements we can do, but you can't really, uh, you can't really uh, force anything through, um, if that's what you're asking, unless you vote for it a lot. That's that's going back to the whale voting. I, I don't know, did I, I don't know if that answered the question. I believe you've answered okay. the question. <laughs> 네, 그리고 다음 질문이 한 가지 더 있는데요. Um, is there any urgent modify way in every PDF? No, but we solve this problem centralized. I'll, I'll show you. So, what we do is, um, <laughs> this is a good question. What we do is on the uh, we on the the main website. Anytime someone submits a vote or something, it gets automatically shown as the article. However, if it ends up getting rejected six hours later, it will get reverted back. And the reason we do this is literally for current events or for vandalism. So, I mean, there's a centralized solution to it by only showing, but um, the decentralized manner, technically the, because the EOS chain is the source of proof, the table entry for the article, that IPFS hash does not get updated until an approval event occurs, but on the front end, centralized, um, what we do is we show the most recent proposal for an article, and if that gets reverted, we just revert it back. So it's a kind of a practical compromise, I guess. And then, let's see, is there, okay, I think. Yes, I think you answered the question as well. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> 네, 세 번째 질문까지 답변해 주셨습니다.